Bueno, muy buenos días a todos. Una vez más, bienvenidos a esta octava sesión del curso de nanotecnología para la administración de fármacos herbales a cargo del profesor invitado especialista Fulbright, el profesor eh, Jaswan Patak. Professor Jaswan, thank you very much again for your course, for this eighth uh, lecture. Um, please, thank help you, you very much. Do you have any people Muchas gracias, Professor Caesar. Uh, it is my great pleasure that I completed my 15 days in Bogota, Colombia, and I am very happy and uh, it is so interesting to be walking around and it is so safe to be walking around in Bogota, Colombia. I enjoy every day. I walk almost five, six kilometers and it gives me a pleasure to meet people and interact with them in whatever poquito, poquito Spanish I know. <laughs> so today is my favorite uh, topic and uh, I have been talking on this issue uh, since my first uh, Fulbright in Indonesia because I was a, I'm a professor of public health also and I had a student who completed her PhD in public health and I have uh, been visiting professor in uh, Erlanga University Faculty of Public Health and I always go and give talks uh, to them. So this is one of the area which I talk on geriatric populations and anybody to be admitted we can okay thank you very much so geriatric population is it a nightmare for public health or opportunities and challenges for public health as well as health care at large and this is what uh, i am going to talk today about it and uh, i am sure you will enjoy some of the slides i had already discussed so i'm going to go a little bit fast and then we'll go uh, in details about uh, the purpose of this talk for geriatric population so all the figures are taken from web sources uh, reference wherever available and to be used only for educational purposes to explain the concepts to the students and not for commercial use as i'm going to share all these uh, PowerPoint presentations with you all. So I want to put this disclaimer so that, uh, you know, it will be used only for educational purposes. So Amo Colombia, e la gente de aquí, mi nombre es Yashwan Patak, actualmente estoy in USA. Uh, soy profesor y decano asociado en la Universidad del Sur de Florida, Taneja College of Pharmacy. Estoy en Colombia como becario Fulbright Specialist and sincere thanks to Universidad Distrital Francisco Jose de Escaldas for hosting me as a Fulbright Specialist here at Bogota. My sincere thanks to Rector and Dean and the other administrative heads supporting my trip here. My sincere thanks to Fulbright Specialist Commission of Colombia for supporting my trip to Bogota, Colombia. I will fail if I do not mention my sincere gratitude to Professor Caesar Aurelio Herano Fierro, uh, being my host and incredible support for making my stay happy here. And I declared this uh, very nicely in my uh, 15 days report, which I submitted to the Fulbright Commission in United States. Uh, I was very happy to meet personally Professor Caesar and interact with him and work with him.
during my stay here. Special thanks to Reem uh, Abdillo Hum and Shannon Fleming of World Learning, Sergio Villamil Sanchez and Sebastian Villa Mizar and many other Colombian Fulbright Commission people for their kind support. Professor Luis H. Reyes, Juan C. Cruz and Willie Moreno and Professor Luis Fernando uh, all have encouraged me to come in Colombia and participate in this Fulbright Specialist Program. Special thanks to Professor Alexis Ortiz from International Office of UDF, JDC and Alvaro Vasquez who encouraged me to apply for this Fulbright Specialist Fellowship from for Colombia and all encouragement is so supportive that outcome is I am here. Desde El Fondo de Mi Corazón, uh, muchas gracias and apologies for my Spanish pronunciation if I if you understand my Spanish, then surely you will understand my English too. Miss Disculpas for me, Espanol. So here is a beautiful view of the University of South Florida, South uh, Tampa campus. And it is all surrounded by the beautiful bay. It's almost 10 miles long bay is there. And we have, uh, you know, this is a Tampa General Hospital on this side and we have a building of University of South Florida here and just across that we will have a, a beautiful new building which has been recently built where the Taneja College of Pharmacy will be hosted and College of Medicine, Murshani College of Medicine are there. So let me uh, tell a little bit of our university. Uh, I take this opportunity. We are the ninth largest university in United States based on a number of students more than uh, now it is almost 55,000 students on campus. It's a huge uh, campus and uh, this is a, a mascot uh, bull for our football team and we have a very big, uh, very good football team, basketball team and the budget of that one game is around a billion dollars, you know, they make a oh. lot of money in that. and. Interestingly, the coach of our football team gets more money than the president of the <laughs> university. <laughs> so we are in the top 50 universities ranked overall achievements in the United States, mostly state university. And I am very glad to tell you that last year, uh, this year, it appeared in last year, we are now elite member a member of the elite organization called Association of American Universities. Throughout the America only 71 universities are member of this and it is very tough to get into a member of AAU and our university were trying to become AAU member for last 10 years mm. and finally we got into it. Congratulations. And it is very uh, great um, achievement for our university and we all have contributed, I have personally contributed because AAU decides how many Fulbright scholars are on the campus, that is one of the criteria. And second criteria is uh, how many fellows of the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences are on the campus. And I contributed to the both things, I am member as well, a member of a fellow of AAAS as well as four Fulbright scholars. Uh, then university, we, we are ranked 23rd by NIH based on total grants issued by the USF. Our total grants uh, in last uh, four years is always been more than $550 million. So the $550 million cash comes into the university kitty for uh, research grants and out of which 42% of the grant goes to university for overhead. So it contributes to the development of core facilities and building new buildings and it is a beautiful place and you will love to visit our university and I will be very happy uh, if you have any questions about how to get into USF sometimes I can talk to and then my email is on the um, my first slide as well as my WhatsApp number we can connect with you anytime you want. We are ranked in top 10 based on number of US patents allotted to the university. I am fortunate to have six patents in last 13 years I am in the university. Most of them, my, my patents are in uh, ophthalmic drug delivery system. 
and this is a beautiful uh, Marshall Student Center, a huge center with several rooms for student activities. And I am glad to tell you that we have more than 600 student organizations. They all sit in this group and it's a huge, uh, because we have like, I am advisor for six organizations. It is the India Bollywood system, then cricket club match and all different types of organizations are there. And there are many Greek organizations. There are many countrywide organizations are there. There are Hispanic organization is a very strong organization within the campus and Hispanic people have several organizations within the campus. And then we have, uh, we are a uh, university of USF Health is a unique concept where we all are part of one group called USF Health, which consists of College of Medicine, College of Public Health, College of Nursing, College of Pharmacy, School of Physiotherapy, and interprofessional, interdisciplinary training of healthcare professionals is the main focus of USF Health. And the future of healthcare is here. That is what we say on USF campus. This is a beautiful building which is known as CAMELS. Center for Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation and we train doctors coming all over the world. They come there for training, one month, two month training. They learn online, they do a lot of robotic surgeries and all these trainings are provided by the university uh, under this USF health. So this is the picture of our present president, Dr. Ria Law. She is a law graduate and she is a practicing lawyer as well as uh, very well known in the society and she uh, was responsible for getting a lot of grants. Recently we got 35 million dollar grant for the nursing college. Oh, yes. So we have 13 different colleges and under these colleges there are hundreds of centers for advanced centers or center of excellence for research and all those things and it is a great place to work. Uh, excellent graduate programs and postdoctoral opportunities for healthcare. We have 200 graduate positions, graduate program positions. And this is our football team going on the place. It's very popular. We have a fun field education, high quality, great weather, great learning atmosphere, unending opportunities and culturally diverse campus with more than now 130 countries on campus. And you name it and we have it. That's what we call our campus. This is a beautiful picture of uh, our campus, lot of green there. So let us talk about our geriatric population. Is it a nightmare for public health and opportunities and challenges to the public health? So uh, we have already seen this. I'm going to rush a little bit through this slide because we have seen that 10 commonly common elderly health issues uh, cover several of them like um, prevalence of many different types of health issues are there. We talked about that increasing rate of chronic diseases, uh, cognitive health is a problem. Uh, there is a challenge with the uh, mental health of the elderly people and then there is a uh, challenge with their physical injuries which happen. So I have discussed this, so I am not going to read it again, but you will be able to see all the data which I have provided here for the thing. HIV, AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases are common in the elderly patients and we have malnutrition is another reason we already talked about that. Uh, we have a challenge with sensory impairments and people, there is a big challenge with the movements of your hands and legs and limbs and your brain. So your brain, your eyes see it, but the response from brain to the limbs is delayed and then you start showing the sensory impairments and you hit the door of the elevator even though your you, eyes see it. Uh, so sensory impairments is common, then oral health is a problem. Uh, substance abuse is quite common in the elderly people in the United States. And bladder control and constipation is another thing which is a big problem for the people there, uh, old people. So now this geriatric population is growing and it is a... Okay. So the geriatric population... Up, whether it is an opportunity or a challenge for the public health is to be considered. And you will find that since 1950s, there is a data available and we are seeing that the population of geriatric people or people who are 65 and older 
is significantly growing over the period of time and the reasons are very um, because of the advances in medical health people are cautious about their health and then there are a lot of opportunities for the people to survive i have friends who are 80 85 and very active drive very well i have a friend who used to be vice provost of a university he is now 91 still teaches mm -hmm. and he is one of the most popular teacher there so there are us population is projected to increase from 312 million to around 400 million in 2050 and 28% of all this uh, 200 400 million will be uh, elderly people and this is where the challenge comes into the picture and you will see that growth of 65 plus population from 1900 to 2050 is growing significantly this is a graph which shows how the age is growing people are surviving longer and longer uh, and then you will find that in the united states population 2010 male population and female population they are almost competing and females survive longer than the male uh, it's very common found out in all the countries that female uh, survive longer than the male so what influences health in the older people is that individual person and his behavior this is most important if the individual is very cautious about his health and all the things then that behavior will help him to grow and stay there for longer then good housing provides opportunity for a good mindset good environment and uh, that is good for the people to live longer than assistive technologies now new technologies have come and you will find that you will find every grocery store in america has to provide now the automatic scooters mm -hmm. and they use it in the grocery stores and they go there yeah. they have scanners and everything it is becoming a very uh, positive thing for them and they don't feel uh, rejected by the society and secondly the technology is growing so much that you can be a wheelchair person but then you can manage the whole thing and drive car so they have put everything on the wheel so you don't have to use your feet even for accelerator or brakes and anything everything in the hand so the cars have been modified the assisting technologies are very interesting uh, then there are several organizations which provide transports to the uh, aging populations and that help them a lot to uh, enjoy their life then there are social uh, facilities which are available everywhere diseases are common in the system so as an individual environment they live in it helps them to become healthy but then challenges are also age related changes genetic genetical problems start showing up when you are old and the diseases are there so you will find that there are advantages and disadvantages being older and this is where the things are moving and Changing scenario in population is, as I mentioned, it is growing and growing and aging is not exactly the news in US now. Global populations also turned older. I was looking at Colombian population and the average Colombian population is now 76. And in Colombia also people live longer and in America the average is now 82. So you are almost close. Colombian population aging as well as American population. So changing scenario, global birth rates and death rates, you'll find that global birth rates are going down, but death rates are also going down. So there are less children, but more elderly people. And this is where now the pressure is coming on the healthcare system. And that is a public health challenge because uh, children are no less in number, old people are higher in number. And this is going to be a very interesting thing scenario in uh, another 10, 15 years. So from 1950 to 2010, the world population increased from 2.5 billion to 6.9 billion. Now it has crossed 7 billion or 174%. Now you can imagine that how the resources are exploited because it is 174% increase is there. And the average annual rate of growth is 1.7%, which is much higher than the US. And global population is expected to be uh, 9.6 billion by 2050 it will be so big population that earth will have problem to feed these people and that is where the challenge is coming up uh, and people are worried about this global uh, population and america is now becoming an aging nation 
because there are less younger people and more older people that is what they call it aging nation as compared to colombia the colombia is a younger nation because your average age is around 31 your older people live up to 76 but your average age total is 31 so colombia is a young country as compared to the uh, american population and it is very nice to have young country because then you are more productive more helpful and all those things are very important for the growth of the country so a more diverse nation america is becoming because of the immigration and now the world is facing an interesting scenario because like europe the population of a one community is growing significantly because the europeans don't marry they stay together but they don't want to have children and in colombia also in other religious population they have 10 to 50 children because they can marry four wives and each of the wives so now the whole demography of europe is changing people from a particular religion like islam is going significantly and a day may come that white people will be in minority in europe and this is where the challenge is there and you must have seen in recent days the whole episodes which are happening around the world especially the hamas and all those things which are happening is a big challenge for a uh, because if your population is elderly if you do not have young people in this society elderly people will be victim of all these things and that is what is happening in many countries there so what are the public health solutions for aging population because public health is a big uh, uh, area in sciences it is growing and people are realizing that public health is more important or as important as the medicine and pharmacy and dentistry and um, so i am very actively involved in public health uh, aspects of the healthcare thing so although aging population undoubtedly places pressure on the policy makers as they seek to stem rising healthcare cost and insufficient attention has been focused on new operator design so there are now coming up with community services for the senior citizen so there are like uh, in tampa it must be happening in colombia also that we have several doctors who volunteer on the weekend and check senior citizens so normally in their daily practice they may be looking 10 patients but on that day they will talk to 400 patients 10 doctors will sit together give them advice and all the thing because otherwise they don't have access to the healthcare so they are working with there are many organizations now working in this system and to improve community based services this is called community based services quality of life mobility across the life course and given the stark reality that 2030 an estimated 20% of americans will be age 65 several vexing questions are now in front of us how to resolve this 20% population is a big number uh, to be addressed and if now the question is is public health prepared to address a rapidly aging population and create a vision for positive change now public health administration public health education public health uh, offices they all are gearing their activities towards the aging population and it is a big challenge for them so that major question is there and uh, some of the questions we need to answer is that what does an aging society mean for the health of everyone now the world health organization always announces by 1990 everybody will have health for everyone then they said in 2010 health for everyone it's not going on now they are saying by 2030 we'll find out health for everyone doesn't work and in such scenario now there is a younger population less in number older population higher in number health for everyone is becoming pressure for the healthcare system so how it is going to affect us we are exploring what is the challenge how do recent demographic development challenge traditional views about and roles of older adults this is another uh, interesting thing that demographic things are changing older population is growing now how it affects it like in america the like i am contributing to the social security of the system so social security is a kitty now the number of people who are contributing to the social security is less and number of people taking social security is more 
So mm-hmm. ultimately, the social security money will dry up. So they are saying by 2035, their social security will be reduced to almost 50 percent. So today you are getting four thousand dollars. Inflation is going up, but your income as social security will go down, and you will get only two thousand dollars. And then it will be hard to survive because the healthcare costs are high. So this is the problem. If the younger population is there, they contribute significantly to the retirement. But the people who are taking retirement are living longer. So there are many people who work for 40 years and taking social security for 50 years. Mm-hmm. That is the problem. Nothing, there is no solution now as on today, what to do with it. And it is a big challenge there. So conceptual models exist that can be invoked or adopted to enhance understanding of the reasons for the observed variations in the health and functioning of older population. Now they are trying to find out new models to try to understand how. So what innovative approaches might public health practitioners implement to address the major causes of diseases, disability, promote quality of life for all populations as they age. And this is the public health challenge, how to provide uh, these things to the population. So an unanswered public health priority. So this is a public health priority. But it is not answered. We don't know the answers for that. We have to explore and we have to find out how you are going to address this. Because a day is there that we are going to have all these people and we will have to take care of them. You cannot dump them or shoot them and kill them. That will not be possible. So public health and believe it or not, in America during COVID, they had, they lost few million people. Out of that few million people, 70% were senior citizens. And one of the politicians made a statement which he will drew immediately. He said that it is good that they died because now they will not use the social security. And that became a big, big problem because that statement by a politician was not a good statement. Yeah, and people jumped on him like in. So he apologized publicly that I made a mistake and you know, so public health, which has played a key role in bringing about this demographic phenomenon, historically has been defined in relation to populations that has focused attention on addressing leading causes of death and identifying risk factors in a particular group. And with people living longer, the challenge is to help them stay healthy and maintain a high quality of life at every age, regardless of the onset of chronic condition. Now, the problem is, as soon as you reach around 60-65, you start suffering from Alzheimer's disease or you start showing neurodegenerative diseases. If you can prevent the neurodegenerative diseases, then you will not be a public health problem. But if you suffer from Alzheimer's disease, then it is a big healthcare challenge. If you suffer from Parkinson's disease, then your productivity, if you are a productive 80 years old, people will like you. But if you are not productive but suffering from diseases, which is normal for aging population, then it is a pressure on healthcare. And now the public health authority or public health people are thinking that keeping these elderly people healthy should be the focus rather than putting them under stress, some anxiety, depression and leading to neurodegenerative diseases. We should avoid that. And this is how the public health people have started thinking about preventing all medical healthcare is started about preventing uh, diseases in healthcare population. So, but people always say that I want to live longer. Everybody likes to live longer, but they want to be in good health. And that is where the focus is that we are public health want to portray that if you want to live longer, you must live healthy. Don't live with diseases. And that is what the focus will be in coming few years in all the things. So early situation that what I was telling you that social security. So there is a people who are gradually going to use the social security will be 48 percent. That's a big number. So your money is dropping out from the system. So in early 60s, the struggle for older Americans received considerable attention by the sectors of public health. By 1965, established the Medicare and Medicaid so that people will get free Medicaid after 65. And Older Americans Act 65 led to creation of administration on aging. So in 1965, people realized that it is the society responsibility that we should provide healthcare free to elderly elderly people. At that 
time it was good because the elderly population was very low. But the same law is now still continued and elderly population is becoming 20%. And now the resources are consumed. And this is the challenge which is going to happen in all the countries. It is not only in United States, but it is a public challenge. I don't know if there is a discussion going on in Colombia about geriatric population. Do they have public health problems? Are they talking about it? Have they talk? In, in Colombia? Sorry. In Colombia, do the government, the public health people, the healthcare people talk uh, geriatric population as a problem? Not uh, much. No, you haven't discussed uh, it. At least I don't realize. I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, to, to the geriatric people? Uh -huh. I don't I you don't think, think so. so? Okay. Think because so. it is time gradually in another five years you will have to start thinking about it because it will create pressure in your health care and then that will be a challenge there. So early situation in USA was good because in 1965 they passed the Medicare, Medicaid, they started giving social security thinking that this will be good for the older people. And in 1978 American Public Health Association they have established a section called Aging and Public Health to reflect the requirements. So in 2010, now it's 10 years only, 10, 12 years that they started thinking about this population. The broad scope of interest of our members and to distinguish ourselves as an organization that uniquely focuses on the intersection of public health and the aging population. And belatedly but importantly, in 1994 major conference on aging finally focused on the needs of older adults and called for cross-agency collaboration and promotion of health of older adults. So in 1994, first time they had a big conference to understand what is the challenges of it. And this is the need of the society. Today or tomorrow in Colombia also the public health department will have to look at how to resolve these challenges in the system. Is it showing the full screen? Yeah. yeah. So there is a healthy aging agenda. So significant population of older adults have some type of physical limitation, functioning, walking two to three blocks is a challenge for them. So in 2007, a, among adults aged 65 to 74, 13% of the male and 21% of the women reported at least one such limitation. Now you will find that the bone structure changes in men and women. Men's uh, bone structure remains stronger even in the old age. But women lose the bone structure because after menopause lot of changes happen in the body, hormonal changes and then their bones become fragile. And that's why a higher percentage of women suffer from these uh, challenges of walking and uh, you know. And then by age 85 years or older, 44 percent of the men and 55.9 percent of the women reporting at least one limitation, either walking or getting up, get sitting down. So to fully address the potential opportunity challenges and improve the lives of older adults, public health community must consider full spectrum and function of this population. So we have to come up with understanding that what are the challenges when you are 65 years old, when you are 70 years old. 80 years old, 85 years old, 90 years old, 95 years old and 100 years old. Because every 5 years the challenges are different. It is not like you know, when you are young from 5 to 55 you don't worry about it. You can jump, you can climb, you can do everything. Run, bike, you have no problem. Once you come to, you know, it, it starts at around 40. Because when I turned 40, 30 years back, my wife gave me a cup as a gift and the cup was saying 40 is not the end of the life but you can see from there. <laughs> That's what the thing is that your deterioration of the health starts when you are 40. 40 plus you know, you don't realize it till 55 but from 40 onwards it is now for me yesterday I walked almost 6 kilometers but I was looking for a bench to sit every now and then. <laughs> If I have, because yesterday I be, we went to the big park, you know, right yeah. that center park okay. before Kali 24, big park uh -huh. is there, yeah, that big guy sitting on a horse, that, uh, ah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is the independence, and yeah, independence, correct park, and then, uh, then I walked to the museum, 
from there because it's only 1.5 kilometers. So I just saw the museum from outside. So I was walking. So from my hotel, it must be almost at least 5 kilometers or one way. So I walked, but I stopped in between because I always saw, hey, there is a bench, I will sit there. <laughs> so this is what happens with the senior citizens. So, um, then healthy aging agenda has to be created. So we are now public health has to find out how you can be healthy. So you need social activity, you need a good diet, you need to address your genes and epigenetics, you need to have productive pursuit and you need to have exercise. If you follow all these points, this is a model which public health is developing. If you follow this model, then you will have a healthy aging and you need to address these five points, uh, social activity, because you need to have social friends. If you don't have friends, you go depression very easily. Uh, if you have a good diet, if you have a good genes, epigenetics, if you have productive pursuits and if you have exercises, then automatically this can become a healthy aging agenda. And this is where now the public health is pushing for this agenda. That if you are 65 plus, nowadays uh, I have an insurance which allows me to become the member of the gym free of charge. Because they 65 above, they in, allow you to go to the insurance. They give me a lot of supply, uh, support for physical therapy. They give me a lot of exercises, mental wellness. There are so many activities the insurance puts in because they want me to be healthy. Because if I am sick, then I will take more insurance money. And that's why they do that. So those are the things which are happening and they are calling it as healthy aging agenda for the senior citizen. So a promising direction is successful aging. You want to create healthy aging agenda plus try to create a definition of successful aging. So what is successful aging is intellectual simulation. So people are saying that once you are 65, then you start learning new language. Like I am trying to learn Spanish. I am here and try to speak Spanish. The more you learn different things, new and newer things, your brain is very active. So you are postponing your Alzheimer's. If you do not use your brain, then you will. So individual uh, simulations, active and independent lifestyles and meaningful contributions. These are the three things which are very important for old people to live and survive happily. If he doesn't have meaningful contribution, then it's a waste. Like I am, I love editing books. So I think even if I retire, I am going to continue till my brain works. So that it is a meaningful uh, activity, contribution to the society. And you know, when I, my first book was published, uh, I was thinking that after 10 books, I will stop editing. <laughs> then it became 25 books. Then I thought 50 is more than enough. Now it is 70. So now I am thinking 100 will be okay. <laughs> so that is called meaningful contribution. So even publications also, initially I used to think that 100 publication is great achievement. But now it's 350, I think I'll continue. Mm -hmm. So you have to have and then active and independent lifestyle. So I come here, I am here alone, staying, walking, doing everything alone and I am active. So that makes me healthy aging or uh, promising direction for successful aging and that is what I think everybody should start doing it. So even people of age 85 and older, mobility balance can be improved with the basic weight training. So the mobility, the, so the, our insurance pays for that. And we can go and do the weight training and that helps in uh, successful mobility. That is where uh, successful aging is becoming very important. So there are promising directions. One is healthcare, providing adequate healthcare for healthy aging. And second is public health and philanthropy and all those things which will contribute for the healthy aging. And these are the things which uh, other relevant successful approaches include initiatives designed to benefit people of all ages, community-based safe walking programs, environmental change policies, public health can support these promising approaches and it can benefit the growing number of older adults. Now another thing which is challenging for us, in Tampa every year we lose 30 to 50 people, bike riders, because the people are not careful. Because if you are riding the bike and people don't want to slow down, so the speed of bike and speed of car, if they don't match, then they hit the car. 
and you if you walk in tampa you will find many places where there is a symbolic bicycle is mm. there that means a bicycle rider died there mm. and that is so people are now trying to change the pattern in the roads so that there will be separate path paths for the bicycle here it is there i have seen yeah, it on the main road also there are things yeah and it is safe and people stop you know i was um, walking with jimena and i was simana and i was telling her hey, let us cross the road she said no 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 it's colombia they don't stop for you <laughs> i said no no they have brakes so no 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 in colombia they don't use brakes they just so so i don't know what is the accident data here but i was i was feeling safe walking in colombia i did not find anything so you have a promising direction so what you want is this is your aging network hospital primary care physicians home health community based physician caregivers skilled nursing facilities pharmacy and non traditional resources so these are the resources which are being developed for aging population that so that they will continue healthy aging and not the diseased aging and these type of services are necessary so young people who are now listening to me yeah this is an opportunity for you to create such services for aging population because in 15 years colombia will need such services and if you create those services in 15 years you can build up a good business out of and as i mentioned giving the food delivering the appropriate good food for them eat well food like that similarly transportation taking them to the hospital bringing them back all these services are necessary and that will create lot of opportunities and jobs uh, for the people and it is a great idea to provide such situation and uh, so can the older generation be a resource for future generation and this is a big thing because uh, i must have told that joke that a white man asked the native american that what is your elder 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 what you talk about the elder so they said that white man gets old older and useless in native americans our men become old older and very useful to the society <laughs> because they carry the banners of the culture they carry the banners of the traditions and that's why the elder concept is there so can we learn from native americans to create this elder concept so that older people they can share their wisdom they share their 50 years of experience or 60 years of experience with the younger people so that they will not make the same mistakes and this is where how to utilize the resource of this aging population for the next generation is another area which can be created so you can build a podcast podcast of 65 plus people how they manage their lives so we have a uh, in india our divorce rate is one of the lowest we have less than 1% divorce rate in india so still we are worrying about our family population so what we are doing is we have created a program which is called as educating family our family 101 course and there the senior people like me i am married for 40 years so i will talk with young people young married couple and educate them how to remain together without challenges for a longer time because we fight but we still mend our way so it is not that you fight with your wife and tomorrow you divorce that is not work because family is very important so we have developed that system where the older people interact with the younger married couples and then tell them how to deal with the challenges because there are challenges and you have to deal with it like in america we have these challenges so we we have courses developed for and we use this resource of the senior generations who are married for 40 years 50 mm-hmm. years and they expect they tell oh we used to fight like that i we were beating and then now i realize no this doesn't work and that doesn't work and they give the examples and then the younger generation think that oh this is a good resource and then you can so this resource can be for education also because i am very good resource for the education students i can educate them i can tell them how to get into american universities i can tell them how to build up your writing skills and that is very normal to 
that I have done that and I can share with her. So research for full generation public health system must too must contribute to expertise, address the opportunities and challenges brought on by aging US population. So public health surveillance system that assess, monitor and health of the broader population can track the changes. Now, in my university, I am known for resolving the conflicts because my expertise is in conflict resolution. So even if there is a conflict, they walk in my office and I make sure that the things are settled down because I am a patient listener. People have no time to listen. And that is where the challenge is. If a younger faculty have a problem, they come to my office. They will cry, do everything. And then I patiently listen to them for one hour, two hour, three hour and tell them some simple techniques. I have a challenge with one of our faculty. So she was saying that I am very stressed. So she had a baby. So she was saying, I am very stressed. So I told her, look, I will tell you, your salary check is for 2080 hours. Our salary, we work for 2080 hours in America. So you work from 8 to 5 and do not take any work to home. You spend good amount of time with your baby. And when you come to office, do the office work in office. So rather than taking office work to home and neglecting baby and then coming to the office and neglecting office work and watching the baby's picture. So you are neglecting both the sides. And then I told her, three months don't take anything to home. Go like this, come like this, but keep everything at work. And it helped her. So this is a very simple technique. So you can reduce your stress by managing your time. And those things can be, it comes out of experience and this is where the old age uh, person can be used as a resource. So resource for future generations is on live generation workforce provide challenges. And it is interesting that in America now they have recognized. So their age friendly employment is there. So like I am, I don't have retirement unless I decide to retire or I'm useless mm -hmm. or I get involved in some bad thing. Otherwise I can continue working. I My boss was 78 years old. He was very productive and he was so helpful to the university that he used to manage a lot of things very well because he had experience. He knew every inch of the university. He was a very brilliant guy. He was a pediatrician. So you can utilize their expertise. You may not be paying them. You can reduce their salary if needed, but they can be very resourceful for and then you just write. Even if you simple tell the people, oh, don't worry, text me. They don't tell, but they think that there is somebody who is listening to me. This is more, the feeling of somebody there to help me is more important than helping. That is where the older people can be very helpful to the scenario. So can older generation be a senior? So public health preparedness initiative must be explicitly attend the vulnerabilities of older adults during natural disasters, threats of infectious diseases, epidemics, and other emergencies. And this is where the challenges come into the picture that younger generation and older generation have to match so that they can take care of each other during the epidemic and other problems. So we need to work on sharpening our collective focus on the aging population as a resource rather than a burden to enrich our society. So public health is now focusing towards making sure that the aging population is not a burden but is a big resource. And this is the paradigm shift has to come into the system. So there is a two approaches, either an optimistic approach, you take life optimistically or you take life pessimistically. So if you create an optimistic approach towards life, then people will be more useful. If you take a pessimistic life, then people will be stressful. And they, if you are stressful, you create stress to everybody. You must have seen in the family that if one family person is stressed, it creates stress in the, all the family. So will these longer life years of life translate into healthier years? This is a question we have to answer that. It is found two alternative scenarios, each offering a slightly different way. The pessimistic view that emphasizes an increased burden of care due to age related illnesses and disability or an optimistic view of postponements in chronic illnesses and disability due to better lifestyle and health care. So this is the options. Either you provide healthy living lifestyle 
so that it will be prolonged and uh, in place of 85 if you get 95 and sick you will be surviving to 3 years so the burden is less on healthcare and that is what you have to uh, understand so public health need to plan for aging populations we have to come up with individual lifestyle factors social and community influences living and working conditions general socio-economic cultural and environmental conditions so all these things are going to be with age, sex, hereditary factors and everything. So we need to create such type of model for the health determinants over the life course. So clinical, behavioral, social risk factors for health, longevity are being identified and then you try to find out how to reduce the obesity, how to reduce the depression in the elderly population, how they can be independent and move around. So this is where, so in America you can have license even up to 90 years old. My friend is 90 years old, he drives and he drives very well, His all things are very good, he is a very good teacher also. So he goes to the university driving and comes back. I have in Florida, we have 85 age people drive very nicely, go slow. Only thing is they go slow, so it is becoming very proper problem for the younger generation because they want to move faster and this guy goes at 25 miles an hour. <laughs> so that is a challenge. So we have to try to find out and probably a day will be there that in Florida they will have certain roads exclusively for senior citizens and the younger generation will like it because it is like bikes. Okay. You have special section of the road for the bikes, special section of the road for the elderly people and it is simply they go to grocery store and come back but they are independent and this independence feeling is a healthy feeling and that need to be maintained for the aging population. So loss of well-being is related to physical process, psychological process, environmental process and employment and financial process. So these are the four areas which we need to address so that they are independent. They, have, uh, they can take care of themselves. So these differ for women and men with inadequate emotional support and social disengagement as significant predictors. Older women with functional limitations as compared to the older men. And this is where we have to understand that you will have to come up with different strategies for men and different strategies for women. They are not same. It cannot be the same for them. And differences point to need consider gender differences in designing health promotion disease prevention program for the older adults. So this is a challenge which is public health has to address today or tomorrow. So healthy people 2020 ecologic model of health determinant. So this is the model which they have created. Uh, the previous model is modified here and they try to find out assessment, monitoring, evaluation, dissemination, then study the intervention, policies, programs, information and then come up with the outcomes. And this is where these models are now being developed in smaller scale to find out how it can be adopted. So best practice for physical activity programs provided by community based organizations have a measurable impact and the health and well-being of the participant can be Major. So now you, they are trying to find out, they adopt a model, they adopt a process and find out whether it is useful, outcomes are good for it or not. So public health need to plan for aging population. So uh, uh, these psychological factors are cognitive functions, happiness, life satisfaction, self growth. I was talking to one of the students here and the student told me that I want to be happy. But happiness means what? It changes from time to time. The same concept of happiness at 20 years old and 40 years old and 60 years old, it changes. And that is where we have to talk about uh, happiness, self-satisfaction and self-growth. And then external determinants are income, environment, social circumstances, religion, national mentality and general good health. So these are the definition of well-being and they, you have to promote this through different types of programs and religious organizations can play a major role in this. In our, in Florida, I have seen that many churches run special programs for the senior citizens and very successful. They don't do it on Sunday because Sunday people are in rush. They want to come rush, rush, rush and go away, the younger people. The older people have a lot of time. So they do it on the weekday. They have cars to bring them to the church, have food and everything and fun. They play cards, they have different types of games and they make their life very uh, enchanting. So what public health need to plan for aging is exercises, you know, Tai Chi and all the things. Uh, I met Dr. Luis, he's a professor of medicine. His one work is on Tai Chi for aging population. 
and he is considered to be a Colombian expert for that application of Tai Chi into the uh, healthcare for medicines. He, he, was, he had a lot of insight into how to use this Tai Chi and different types of meditation and yoga and all the things for these uh, things, elderly people. So you will find that in the nursing home they sit. In America it is very interesting that they marry at 85-90 also in the nursing home. If the wife dies, then they want a companion rather than staying alone and depressed. You marry another time and this is another thing which is possible. So public health is social support, social network, social cohesion and social capital. So participation in organized sport and recreation, cognitive functions, improved physical and mental health, well-being and reduction of obesity. In uh, Florida, we have a very interesting area called villages. They have 95,000 people in one area who are all above 65, 65 to 105, all different ages. So what they do is they have every week market, they have various programs for elderly people. They put all of them into a big bus, take them to the casino. <laughs> And they spend because they have money also. They are rich. Many of them are industrialists, CEO of the company. They have millions of dollars in their pocket. But they are old because they cannot do many things on their own. So now these villages have facilities provided. 95,000 old people, imagine. They manage that. Too many buses they have. They take them to casino, take them to beaches, take them to different places. And it's very interesting to create. So University of Washington Health Promotion Research Center emphasized the importance of tailoring physical activity, promotion to meet social and health needs of the immigrants and ethnic minority older adults. And feedback from seven different ethnic groups revealed a desire to combine physical activity with social support programs and a preference to participate in activities. So now in America, there is another challenge because we have like 8 million Indians. So out of 8 million Indians, at least 1 million are 65 plus. Their needs are different. We have 25, 25% uh, 25, uh, 25 is almost Hispanic population. Hispanic people are different. Their enjoyment concept is very different than the white people. You know, if you come to Florida, you will find that they will go on the beach, put a loud music, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spanish music and have a big grill and eat. But they are very happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, loud, you know, it is very difficult. I will tell you a joke. I was interviewed in Dallas. So my person, vice president said, we'll go and eat Mexican food and have interaction also, interview. We went to the Mexican restaurant and we were about to order the food. In between, we realized it is very difficult to talk because all the Mexicans were talking so loudly <laughs> that the vice president said, let us go to some other restaurant. <laughs> we went to the white people restaurant, nobody is talking. <laughs> you know, so the Hispanic, Hispanic people's needs are different. African people's needs are different. And America has all the different populations. So their needs are different. So we have to address those needs for the aging population also. So on the basis of this data and specific recommendations, strategies of culture, language, specific programming, community-based physical activity programming to provide options for targeting programs of different levels of physical abilities, offer programs for groups as well as individuals, bring programs to where people live, partner with other programs, make programs, identify ways to keep programs affordable, involve older adults in developing and evaluating programs and foster relationship building and draw and support. Now these are some of the activities which public health is recommending for the aging, uh, aging population. They are working on it. So you have a patient provider healthcare system. Now when the patient becomes older patient, the needs are different. And that is where the healthcare has to Healthcare system has to adapt to the aging population and enhancing the provider patient interaction. You know, many a time the older people, they don't have any problems per se. They just want to talk to the doctor. And once you talk to the doctor, they will not come back for one month. They don't want any medicine also. But they want to know that they are healthy. And the only doctor can tell them that they are healthy. They don't listen to other people. So this interaction, patient provider doctor interaction is very important and that needs to be adopted in this. Reason for medication non-adherence is that affordability, side effect, forgetfulness, lack of uh, info. So uh, people who are under healthcare delivery, they, they have problems because they, they, 
many times they don't take the medicine and they show the side effects of the medicine. So all inclusive care is necessary for elderly people and that's why now there are several nursing homes where in America it is very interesting. I don't know you you might be aware of it. If suppose I am old and if I fell down in my home, my son will be responsible for me and then his insurance has to cover my expenses. My insurance will not do it. So old age becomes a liability for the children because if you keep them and something goes wrong then you are liable for your old age parent and that's why people say take them to the nursing home because nursing home has a lot of insurance and every coverage is there so they are more safer and they cover that so this is a nursing home cell but there is also a group of people who are saying that will not go to nursing home so recently i was meeting some of my senior citizen friends they were all 78 years old, 85 years old, one family was 91 years old. They were staying at home, not going to nursing home because they were healthy. Good aging practices and that is what is needed to uh, educate people how to you can avoid the nursing home. So testing innovations in healthcare delivery is also another thing that as you grow older and older, you need more uh, diagnostic testing so that you will be detecting the disease at the early stage. If you have a cancer, you detect it early stage, you can treat it. And that is where the testing of the healthcare is very important as you work with the aging population. Now, so you have to plan now with the technology. You know, artificial intelligence, all these things are now will, will be very helpful to deliver some of the things to get the innovations in the healthcare delivery. And many universities are putting up programs for using modern technologies for healthcare. So there is a coordinated healthcare model pace where primary care is there, home care is there, nursing homes, hospitals, lab and x-ray pharmacy, day health nursing, social services, nutrition, recreation, personal care and specialists. So what they do is if a patient is at home, you can send the nurse to the home and take the blood samples and all those things. So the patient need not go to the hospital and block the thing. So, uh, this is another model which they are trying to have a coordinated model where they provide the healthcare at home and rather than taking the patient to the nursing home. So barriers to program growth which include both programmatic issues and support of the federal and state governments have resulted in slower than anticipated growth. So there is a need for money here and in America the health money is, lot of money is required to provide such things. And that is where the challenges are coming because healthcare money is going there. So another thing, there are eight domains of livability are there. So if you have a transportation, some younger person is always with you, good housing. So all these are good health care. And if you walk with children, you are healthy. It's very interesting. Older people, if they stay with younger generations, their grandchildren or great grandchildren, they are more happy because they try to run with them. Otherwise, they will sit and know oh, I am sick and all those things. But the, if a baby is running, they run after them. You must have seen that yes. old people do that. And that is another way of creating community resources, putting younger children and older children, uh, people together so that they will have. So domains of livability are transportation, community support, housing, you know, these are all best areas. And age-friendly processes are entering the network, planning the phase, implementation, evaluation and continuous cycle of improvement. That is the age friendly process which they are trying to create as a community support to the aging population and providing the domains of livability. So there are a lot of information and papers are being published on various areas, Greater Portland, Maine, different areas they are working with uh, people to find out the solution for that. So there is a source, message, audience and channel. So this is how the communication has to be disseminating the public health campaigns have to continuously it is for public health aging population also should know what are the facilities for them otherwise you stay in the bank and you lose money so that doesn't happen to educating them to maintain their money also is a very important thing now here there is an interesting area which is japan has developed it and now many countries are developing is called parks and recreation a true health solution for aging population so they make sure that younger children also are there, older people, middle age people are there. So there are parks for playing of children. So automatically their parents come 
and older people are there. I have seen some parks here also while walking. They are very good ideas for elder people just to sit there. There is a wheelchair person going around. And in this way, this type of park and recreation really builds up the healthy aging. And that is where Department of Health and Human Services is stepping up this number of parks. And I have seen in many countries I have visited and I am seeing this type of thinking is going on with the government money. They are building up such parks there. So the identifying current data sources. So there is a lot of information now available on the data sources like National Center for Health Statistics or NIH has a lot of information. So you try to identify the data sources, find out how you can implement those things for the betterment of the healthy aging population. So you are using all different types of technologies to make sure that healthy aging happens and databases can be utilized to get more and more information about uh, experiments which are done all over the world from different countries and how they are successfully done. So there is a uh, short analysis, so strengths are there, weaknesses are there, uh, opportunities are there and threats are there. So based, based on short analysis of all these, you create new data sources and resources for the uh, people, aging people to find out how they will now there is another thing which is coming up and growing in public health It's called evidence based public health framework. And they have community assessment, qualifying the issues, developing and concise statement of the issue, determining what is known using scientific literature, developing and prioritizing programs and policy options, developing action and plan, evaluating the program and policy and coming back to the community assessment. So this is a model which is uh, called evidence-based public health framework which is going on and people are doing a lot of researches in this area. So evidence-based intervention offer great promise for health promotion and disease prevention through the latter life. And nowadays they don't use aging, they call it latter life, you know. <laughs> aging is changing the definition. If you survive for 100 years, it's latter life. And national campaigns are supporting individual actions through community commitment, emphasizing the importance of intervention strategies at multiple levels. And these are some of the programs they are using it for the uh, thing. Then they are creating a lot of information resources. There are no journals dedicated to aging and aging population. And they are coming up with a lot of books. I have a beautiful book edited in Indian. Uh, I'm not seeing the screen. Sounds great. So there are several uh, resources which have been developed for the aging population. So there are journal article, conference papers, e-resources, lot of databases are available, newspapers are continuously writing articles on the thesis, dissertations. Many people are doing their PhD on geriatric population and how it can be helpful to them. Many books are coming up and as I was mentioning that in Indian tradition we have first 25 years you work for education, second 25 years you work for um, family and have children and then once your children start working then you are not needed in the family. So you start working for the society and provide your expertise for the society, which we have a term called Vana Prastashrama. And then from Vana Prastashrama, you go to Sannyasrashrama, where you detach yourself and work for the spiritual development. And in that 50 to 75, you contribute to the society. And this is where this aging population can be used as a big resource for the aging society. So aging population will challenge healthcare systems all over the world. This is a prediction and William Hastings, scientist, businessman and philanthropist has mentioned it uh, and he was a professor at Harvard Medical School and he predicted that two decades before that it is going to be a big challenge for the healthcare all over the world and you need to address the world will not be able to get rid of aging population. They are going to grow like this and then the younger population is reducing. And this is where all the countries are going to have challenges. And aging population will challenge healthcare systems all over the world. So uh, there has to be a communication message, tool, user, new message. This is the 
typical feedback model and aging population that constitute to grow our healthcare system will be changed forever. Are we ready for it? We don't know yet, but we should have to find out solutions. According to the Global Health and Aging report presented by the World Health Organization, the number of people aged 65 and older projected to grow from an estimated 524 million in 2010 to around 1.5 billion in 2050. So it is almost three times in 30 years. With the most of the increase in developing countries, in addition, by 2050, the number of people 65 and older is expected to significantly outnumber children younger than five years of age and that is where the society will become old and you will have problems. So world population you can see in 1998 to 2100, 11.2 .2 billion, it is going on, growing. And who attributes elderly population rapid size increase is a change in the leading cause of death from infection to chronic non-communicable diseases which increase because earlier people used to die till 20. Uh, 1950 people used to die of infectious diseases. A lot of people will die of pneumonia, malaria, bacterial infections, dengue, all sorts of things. Now they don't die because we have vaccines. Mm -hmm. We have so many medical health for them and that is why the people are living longer and longer. So you will find that the cost is growing up. Resources. So you see the challenge which is faced by the Scenario. So, aging facts you need to know is 92% of the seniors live with at, at least one chronic disease condition and 77% live with one or more disease condition. Cancer is increasing because people are living longer and cancer is happening. Dementia is increasing. Increase in falls is a common thing. And these are some of the challenges which healthcare is facing. Uh, depression is one of the person they just keep on seeing in the sky because depression and it is very difficult to, they don't know, they are eating, not eating and that's why they suffer from malnutrition and malnutrition leads to another health challenge and obesity, diabetes, we have discussed these challenges earlier. So resources needs more will continue to increase across the healthcare incidence of obesity will continue to increase, yeah. shortage of healthcare professionals is expected. Now today I was just reading, uh, the US government is running short of doctors and nurses on a large scale. Florida state gave 35 million to our university to build up nursing college and increase the intake so that they will satisfy the needs of nurses. So they are trying to immigrate people from other countries uh, to be nurses and doctors in America because they don't have people because their older population is so high that they need full time physicians and all those things. Getting to the Affordable Care Act poses a major challenge in there. So healthy longevity is a grand challenge. To address increasing aging population, healthcare system must take these challenges into consideration and they have to adapt to this challenge. They don't know now because you know today if I go to hospital and I have some two days in hospital, my bill comes to $55,000. Mm. How it will happen? And old age people are staying more in the hospital and Medicare covers it. So they don't pay. The hospital expenses are growing and they don't know resources coming in mm -hmm. and that is where the longevity is going to be a big problem for the society. So Britain in the 2020s key fact of Britain is also facing same thing 70% in 2012 they will be 30% in 2060 in Britain. Britain is also a old people country now higher older people than the younger people and they are facing their problem they have their healthcare is consuming a lot and focusing on a single disease rather than comorbidity can result in insufficient focus on other places. And now there is another thing which is happening is that the medical system, they are running short of family medicine people, family medicine experts. They have specialists, but the heart specialist doesn't know anything about lungs. The lung specialist doesn't know anything about gastrointestinal. So four specialists give four different prescriptions. They inter and it is becoming more budget burden for the healthcare. So rather than that, a good family medicine person can take care of all the poor aspects. But that is where the challenge is coming. So healthcare will have to change. And nowadays America is focusing more and more on family medicine residency. They want more people with family medicine residency. Earlier, the reason is very simple. If you are a family medicine resident and you are a doctor of family medicine, your salary is 
if you are a neurosurgeon, your salary is $850,000. What you will be? You will try to become neurosurgeon. Why you will become family medicine? So family medicine, because they were getting less money as compared to rest of the specialties, people went to the specialty training. And now there is a problem because for the common thing, you go to specialist and the burden is on healthcare expenses. And that is the problem which is going on in America. So scale and rate of global population changing was 18, 2012 it was 11%, 2030 it is 16%, 2050 it will be 22%. And that will be, by this percentage, no country will be able to survive with healthcare free healthcare, they will have to come up with some solutions to get the people there. So aging population, we have to Central South America are also rapidly aging. Every country in the region, the proportion of people over 60% is increasing significantly. Same demographic changes are happening in Caribbean, where low and falling fertility rates compound to the problems. Now another thing which is happening is a very dangerous scenario. And I don't know whether it is realized in Colombia or not. But because we are eating food, which has traces of fertilizers and which has traces of insecticides and which are traces of different hormones, the fertility is going down. So they say that the sperm count for the young men is going so down that they cannot produce children. So they have to use different techniques to have children. And this is becoming a major challenge for the global society because of the random at random use of fertilizers and insecticides and hormones. Mm. And this is where the problem is coming up that married couples, no children. Mm -hmm. And because of the sperm count is going down and that is a major challenge people are facing over the there. So aging population in Greece, Spain, Italy, Portugal, governments had to reform pension systems after the crisis. When they had economic mm -hmm. crisis, they had to reform the pension system because they couldn't afford to pay the pension to the old people. And increasing retirement age, limiting the number of benefits, reducing the resources allocated and healthcare, social care. In Asian countries like China and India, there are even greater challenges due to sheer number of older people. In China, the population of people over 65 is expected to jump from 8% to 24% in just 30 years. And now Chinese economy is going down. So you can imagine what will happen to the China because they have 1.4 billion people like India. So aging population, neither low, low or middle or high income countries are immune to the implications of these changes and people, as people age, they suffer from more and more illnesses. It is not that you are rich, doesn't mean you are no illnesses. It is going to happen and it will have physical and emotional burden on providing care to the aging load compounded with fiscal burden of the economy. And that is where aging population will change. So in Japan, you know, there are so many old people that they have old age people's rooms, they sleep there, like baby, you know, children's crash, you have children sleeping in the crash, mm -hmm. you know, they put them to the bed, sleep. And this is where these, these are the facilities now, they are providing it to the older people in, and government must plan decades ahead, studying the, now, we have to understand that if the government doesn't take real action now, by 2030 to 2050, it will be too late. Mm. And no government will be able to work and adjust this based on the taxes they are getting. And then there will be a problem because no taxes, high rate of taxes will not even help them. So we have to create outdoor space building, transport, housing, social participation, respect and social inclusion, civil participation, community support, communication and information. This is another model they are incorporating few more things. So many countries are finding new cost effective approaches to elder and long term care and needs of their growing population of elders and they are trying to come up with new and newer models to see that. So there is the four key domains of liability grand rapids, you know, everybody is having different models here. So employment, volunteering, social participation, community health, outdoor spaces, you know, everything is different for different groups. So dementia, Alzheimer's disease, other neurodegenerative are major challenges with aged population. And that takes the major chunk of healthcare. And this is the challenge, how to avoid them, they are uh, working on it. So age friendly New York model is, they are coming up with a lot of facilities for aging populations in the buses, they have spaces, resort space for, and then after 11 o'clock, there are different rules for the aging population. So the New York City is working on this 
to accommodate them because they have a large population of senior citizens there. So another health insurance they are trying to develop a different senior citizen plan for younger people, different individual plans. So insurance is also coming up with something which is with chronic diseases and how uh, the insurance can be utilized for them. So Sweden is aging population is considered by some to be ticking time bomb for the Swedish welfare because Sweden don't have younger children. They do not have children because they don't marry. They mm -hmm. stay together on high divorce rate. So Swedes on average is getting older in Sweden and other Eastern Europe, Western Europe country, the fifth of the population has passed 65 birthday. Already that 20% is more than 65 years old. And in next two decades, the number of age people age 80 in Sweden is in, expected to increase around half a million to $800,000. Demographic change is arguably one of the most important long-term societal changes occurring in Sweden. But now Sweden is facing another thing because the Muslim population is growing there. And a day will come that white Swedish will be, and Muslim population is the youngest. So their young population is mostly Muslim there. And that is a, I don't know how they are going to manage that. So systems are well, case of Sweden is a very interesting, Swedish welfare can adjust to, you know, earlier Swedish used to give full retirement, free, pension, all healthcare free. Now they cannot manage because the money is not there, taxes are not enough. And that's why they were trying to find out new models uh, and how to deal with their uh, economy in the Sweden. Uh, and they have very interesting, they are trying to do modern biologic modification can exam, but they are also moving towards healthy aging and successful healthy aging and that is where they are trying to find out the solution for that. So some facts about elderly Sweden aging population 70% and 5.5% 80% like expectancy 78, women 82, well developed health and welfare system, most elderly have good health but there are gaps. And this is where they are trying to find out how Sweden has for long had one of the most generous public health care system. Now they cannot afford it. And this is where the uh, problem is coming up for the Sweden. They are providing a lot of facilities for the old people. But in spite of that, modern medicine and technology increasingly make it possible to detect like ailments. And you can live longer. And this is a big challenge there. So there is no doubt that we are getting older. In the mid 19th century, only about three Swedes were 100 birthday. Now the figure has closed to 1000 each year. 1000 each year survive up to 100 years. And optimistic projection is majority of children born in this country will become centenarians. And this is all good news, but then it provides big challenge and political interest are how to encourage it longer living and take the challenge. So we need to take care of them. We owe them. Public health professionals have to take plunge to build plants and provide necessary too many challenges, but a lot of opportunities. That is where you have to look at it. And genetic population is not a burden, but a challenge. And you have to take the challenge and manage your uh, economy. If you cannot manage your economy, then you are going to face a major chunk of uh, problem in the society. So, muchas gracias and thank you. I appreciate it. I thank completed at 11.29. Huh? Very short. <laughs> yeah, every time I... Any questions? No questions? Any questions on the group? Has a question. Let me open the microphones. There is no questions in the chat. But oh, that's good. Anybody has any question? No. Gracias. No. I can rush to the restroom <laughs> and come back then. <laughs> okay. Good. So, thank you very much. If there is any question, thank you very much again, Professor Jaswan Patak. My pleasure. Yeah. So, have a nice weekend, long weekend. Have a Thanks. holiday. Yeah. So, see you next uh, Tuesday. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Muchas gracias, gracias a todos. Nos vemos entonces la próxima semana, el día martes. Hasta luego.